Hello everyone and welcome to Culinary Arts. This may be your first time in Culinary Arts where you're studying the Intro to Culinary Arts program. It may be that you're returning for level one or possibly level two. Either way, we're going to talk about everything you need to know, whether it's your first time or if you're coming back after maybe a year of absence in the classroom and kitchen so that you're all up to date. We're going to start today with your course syllabus. Each course syllabus is different from each level, but they do have some similarities. We're going to go over those main areas so you know what to look for and you know the types of things that are coming up. So my name is Dominic Hawkes. I am the culinary instructor and chef who takes care of all of the culinary programs from intro level one and level two. My room number at Lancaster Career Center is 411. And I do have my phone number on here. This is the phone number for the Career Center. If you need to leave a message with me, please leave it with the receptionist and they'll make sure that I get it. But if you need to get something to me directly, the best method of communication is my email address. Then after that, we're going to take a quick look at our Google Classroom. Your Google Classroom page will look similar to this. This is currently indicating the stream. While we're looking at the stream, this is like a notice board. In here, you're going to see welcoming notices and each week there'll be something new and updated telling you about the types of things we'll be studying and working on in the kitchen during that week. When you click over to the second tab, you'll see classwork. In here, you can see we already have the first week of the semester and we have some work involved that will be in here. This is the only place where you will find your work that you need to work on. Don't worry about it being placed elsewhere. I like to keep it nice and simple. You'll also find in here that I place some recipes. These are the recipes we'll work on in the kitchen at school. You can also go ahead and work on those at home if you'd like. However, always please get permission from your parents or your guardians before you do any kind of cooking or preparation at home. Embedded into your Google Classroom, each week you will find a class recording. We will go over all of the chapters that we're looking to study every semester. Each day before you come into school, you'll be expected to watch about 10 to 15 minutes of a class recording. How do you know when you've watched enough of that video? It's going to ask you a question so that you can answer it and it will be specifically to do with that piece of the class recording that you just watched. Let's take a look and see an example. And now we can see that class recording has come to a stop for a moment and it's asking us a question. It's multiple choice and we just need to answer the question and this will be part of your graded result each week. Looking down on our course syllabus, you can see next up is our Google Meet video conference system. We have the ability, if it's simpler for parents or students to be able to have a communication or a conference, to be able to do it via video conference if that's preferable. Just get in touch with me if that's needed. I also have a YouTube channel. It's just literally called Chef Hawks. Very simple and easy to find. You'll find at the bottom of this syllabus, there's a QR code that you can click right onto it. I do have all new students subscribe to that. And this is so that it's a backup process so that when you go to look at your classroom recordings, if for some reason your Google Classroom is down, then you can find them on my YouTube channel as well. Either way, just to make sure you're always prepared. This is how my YouTube channel looks. And you can actually just peruse down and you'll see I have lots and lots of different videos that have been created on different foods that we cook, different stocks, soups, sauces, everything that we generally will cover and more. There's also some cleaning videos on there for some of our equipment. And then I also go into all of these class recordings. And this is where you can find them if you need that as a backup. I've had many students enjoy using the recipe videos that I have on here to cook things at home as well. But remember, always ask permission from your parents or guardians before you're cooking at home. The next item that we're going to talk about is our program website. There's also a QR code at the bottom of the syllabus where parents or students can use to click right onto there or you have the website right here. Let's take a look. 
you can see the home page right here and we can scroll down you can see there's a link to the YouTube channel we talk about different certifications that are also available to students we also go into the vision statement and the mission statement on a federal and local and career center as well as our program uh, level as well I've got all my contact information and I also have my schedule written up there as well we then move over to some culinary resources right over here you have the ability to click on to get more information um, about our classroom as well and then over here take a look this is all about some great images from our classroom and our kitchen of things that students have created in the past and some really great experiences that we've all had as well. Then you can go to the next tab over if you are in the Intro to Culinary Arts program and this goes into our syllabus so you can always refer to all of the information that's on here. The same for Culinary 1 and then to click over to culinary 2. This has all of the information that's very specific to your certain class. If you ever have any questions about any of these things, please feel free to reach out. Now that we've been introduced, let's start going through the rest of our syllabus so that we can be clear on all of the expectations that I can have of you, but that you can have of me too. So we are part of the hospitality and tourism career cluster. There is no prerequisite to doing culinary arts at the intro level, but in order to go on to level one and then on to level two, you must pass each of those levels. I now have a little piece on here that's specifically pulled from the state's website and standards that talks about what we're going to do. This is only just the top of the iceberg here because we're going to be covering an awful lot more at Lancaster Career Center. I do discuss my instructional philosophy I have very high expectations of everyone coming into the course and we come from all ranges of life and all different levels of capabilities within culinary arts when we first come in. We're going to explore that the first day you walk into my, um, into my classroom. However, I do know that by the time you're done with level one and level two, that you will have an awful lot more skills within there, but this all comes with the basic philosophy of looking to make sure every day when you walk in, you bring in your best. You're expected to also taste all the foods. Exceptions are only given for allergies and religious beliefs. We'll talk about those in a few minutes as well. Some major course assignments and projects that you can expect to see as you go along is a safety test because every student coming in at each level must pass a basic safety test, passing with a 100, this is important because we can't be 90% or 80% safe. We have to be 100% safe. We'll go into this though and we'll make sure that every student is set up for success. You'll also have the opportunity during the intro class to be able to take the Serve Safe Food Handler certification. This is the first of your certifications that are nationally recognized that you'll have the option to take. In level one, you'll have others and level two, you'll have others. We're going to discuss all of those in just a few minutes. At the end of each level, there will be a skills-based practical final as well. We'll talk more about that as the semester goes along and as we prepare you for that. There'll be an end of course test and also throughout intro level one and level two, you and I are going to work on an equipment safety checklist to make sure that you are familiar in the safe handling, use and maintenance of all of our pieces of equipment in the kitchen. We have our recommended and required reading that we use, and we use from the National Restaurant Association their Foundations of Restaurant Management program. It's an excellent textbook series, which goes into a lot more than just culinary. It really goes into an awful lot more of the hospitality side as well. So you're going to get a great experience and foundation that covers you in the hospitality field. As with other studies that you have in school, we have the same grading scheme that we go with as well. Note that a 70 in this class is required to be able to move on to Culinary 1 and also to be able to go for the ACF, the American Culinary Federation certification. We'll talk more about that in just a minute.
missing assignments will go into PowerSchool as zeros until they're completed. This is partly a marker for me, but also an indicator for you and for your parents to make sure that we don't miss things. A zero is the worst thing you can have on your grade. If you know basic math, then you know that an average is drawn down so dramatically with zeros. Let's work together to make sure there are no zeros in any of your grades. Assignments will, uh, will be also graded on correct grammar and spelling at times as well. There may be some instances where you have to do some distance learning. When you may have the flu, you may have inclement weather, you may have an injury. All sorts of things happen throughout your schooling career, but we're prepared to make sure that your education doesn't stop if you can possibly still continue with it. This includes if you are in ISS or OSS. If you can get your Google Classroom open on your Chromebook, then you can continue with the work. Students, when they come back after an extended absence, for any reason, tend to be very anxious because they have so much work piled up on to their workload. This is certainly something that's avoidable. So if it's possible for you to open up your Google Classroom and get onto there, you can get the work done and up to date. So when you come back, we can get you caught up on any of the practical side much, much easier than it would be if you have to do the practical and theory side coming back in. Always bear this in mind, because you never know when one of these distance learning instances may come up. So let's take a look at our basic procedures that we do every day and your behavior plan, what you should do every time you enter my classroom. So you should be entering calmly and on time. If you're not on time to work, then you'll find that you're not going to keep that job for long. This course is here to start training you for the workforce and for your future as a success. Make sure that you turn in any homework that's required. This probably will generally be done electronically. Make sure you put away your cell phone. Put it on silent so it won't disturb anybody. You should be sat down and ready for class to begin when that bell rings. Cell phones have to be deposited into the secure lockbox if you're leading, leaving to go to the from the classroom into the bathroom. They can then be retrieved by the student on their return. Keeping the door locked is every uh, student's responsibility. Only the teacher, me, can open that door and it must never be propped open. Don't ever be tempted to do this. You will find that when you have to leave the classroom and we're in the kitchen, sometimes you have to knock on the door pretty loudly when we've got the fans going. But it's important that that door remains locked to keep everyone's security. Please take note of the culinary food lab consumption policy because culinary arts is not a replacement for lunch. You'll, you'll be expected to taste all of the foods that we make, even if it's things that you don't really like. But it's important that you understand you're not going to be having lunch every day in our classroom. Students have to comply with the Lancaster County School District rules and policies on everything that you do from behavior to your attire as well. Students should be respectful to one another, faculty and administration. This is going to prepare you for the real world. Employee grades, employability grades will be awarded each week in classes and labs. The student's willingness to work their work ethic, their attitude uh, will play a huge factor in this grade. Google Meet or video conferencing etiquette, if we ever have to do this, maybe if we have inclement weather, always make sure that you're on time, mute yourself, and make sure that you're prepared and that you're dressed appropriately as well. You should be dressed in the same way you would be for school if you're online. Supplies that you're going to need throughout the semester. So you'll need pens or pencils, something to be able to write with each day. You'll at times need a basic calculator. You can generally use the one that's on your Chromebook as well. You'll need a three ring binder, a one inch uh, size one, somewhere where you can keep any notes that you might want to have. Or you may want to have a small notepad that you can keep in your back pocket for taking notes when you're in the kitchen. It's entirely up to you as to what you would prefer. Uniform parts, we're going to go more into detail on this. You will be issued a uniform and you will be expected to take care of it throughout intro level one and level two. Students are expected to bring a charged Chromebook to class every single day. Non-operating Chromebooks and inappropriate 
use in classroom, like watching videos and things like that that aren't sanctioned, are both contrary to our employability grade as well. The lids should be down when we're not using them, and damaged and non-operational Chromebooks should be reported immediately because you will need them each day. We will actually go into the classroom and into the kitchen, and we'll be using them to look up things like recipes and different work that we'll be using every day. Be prepared. So homework and missing work policies. So homework, uh, which may be unfinished classwork, is generally in your Google Classroom and is due according to the dates shown. Late work credit is at the discretion of myself, but generally late work is not graded. I expect you to get things done on time. Please come and talk to me as soon as possible if there's any issue on any given week. I'm a very reasonable person, but if I don't know and you're just not producing work, then that just tells me you're not looking to do the work. If you're absent, then as we also already spoke about, make sure if you can possibly get into your Google Classroom and get things done, so that that way it doesn't build up as a big stress ball for you before you come back to school. Most regular homework will be video based, as I've already mentioned, looking at the ed puzzles and then reading along with the notes that are in there and making sure that you're answering those questions. Those will count towards your grades every week. So absences and tardies will be affecting your uh, your employability grade as well and are also marked down according to the district policy. If you have too many absences, then according to your school, they report to us how many days you need to make back up again towards the end of the semester. This can turn into an exceptional amount of extra work that you have to get done and can result in you having to drop the end course without passing it at the end of the course. This is a shame if you've already put in a lot of work, so please don't let that happen. Keep up with your work so it doesn't build up to too, uh, too big of a deal. Everything should be manageable so that you can take care of it. Being on time for your class is important. Being on time for work is important. And this is what we're learning about. Make sure that you're not assuming that your school is going to let me know about any planned activities, um, or if you have standardized testing, or if you have ISS or OSS, please let me know. Send me an email so that I know what's going on, and I can hopefully then communicate with you if there's anything I can help with as well. Make sure that you have access to your Chromebook and keep up to date on all of the things that are in there so that that way nothing builds up and it's too big of a deal. Now looking at hygiene, which is our number one most important thing in our kitchen. We run our kitchen according to the Department of Health laws and rules so that we make sure that our food that we're preparing not only for us to taste and eat, but also for outside customers to be able to taste and eat safely. So when this comes in, we have to look at hygiene and any jewelry that we may be wearing as well. So we always make sure that we wash our hands carefully and thoroughly. We're going to learn how to do this, but you're going to wash your hands between the classroom and the kitchen more times than you ever will in any other class. I guarantee that. Make sure that you maintain your personal cleanliness, that you're regularly washing, showering, bathing, and that make sure you're wearing a very mild scented deodorant Things like colognes and aftershaves, um, they can actually be very, very strong in aroma. So any of these types of perfumes can actually shut off your olfactory senses where you can't taste and smell food properly. So always have some, something that's very mildly scented. Do make sure that you keep your hair washed and tied up if it's long. If it's touching your collar, then that's long enough that it needs to be tied back so that it's not going to be able to drop into any of the food at all. Make sure that you're wearing a hair covering so that, that way it keeps any long hair out of your face and completely behind you and tucked up uh, out of the way. We'll talk more in class about suitable coverings, but if you have exceptionally long hair or if you have any, um, any artificial hair that's been woven into your hair, you need to make sure that it's going to be fully enclosed and encapsulated so it can't contaminate any food. Make sure that you cover any cuts, scrapes, or sores, whether they happened in the kitchen or elsewhere. Make sure that you report to me any issues of diarrhea, vomiting, jaundice, which is any yellowing around your eyes and around in um, around your cheeks and into your, on your fingernails as well, or any kind of sore throat with a fever. In fact, let me just tell you now, if you have a fever at all, you should not be in school because you may be contagious. But any of these other items 
are very specific to food preparation where you will not be able to be in the kitchen on that particular day. We'd have to set you another assignment to do. Make sure that you don't have any artificial nails. Um, if anybody has artificial nails or nail polish on their nails when they first come into culinary arts, then we'll have to make sure that that does eventually come off. Uh, my daughter is in cosmetology, and so I know exactly how long these things last. And so it is important, though, that in uh, whether you're in intro, level one or level two, you will not be able to have artificial nails or nail polish. And after a couple of weeks, that will start affecting your employability grade as well. This is something that we can't have dropping off into food and contaminating our food. With earrings, make sure that you have only very small either stud earrings or hoops, which are no larger uh, than one inch. So that, that way they can't get caught onto any other things and get torn out from your ear. Our kitchen is a dangerous environment and we have to make sure we keep you as safe as possible. You're not allowed to wear any wrist or finger jewelry, including bangles, bands, watches, rings, uh, anything else like that. The only exception is you are allowed to wear a simple wedding band, but that's only, I guess, if you're married. But if you are, congratulations. But beyond that, you're only allowed to wear one simple wedding band uh, and no other jewelry around your wrist or fingers. Gum is not permitted at any time in the classroom or in the kitchen. There's a couple of reasons for that. When you're chewing gum, whether it's cinnamon flavor, bubble gum, or if it's uh, juicy fruit or mint, it's got a very strong flavor. It's going to leave you with a palate that's wrecked. You won't be able to taste any of the food properly. So it's important that you don't have that happening to you so you can taste food correctly. But even more importantly, if that falls out from your mouth and drops into the food, now that food is ruined. We would have to throw whatever it is out if that drops into the food. The other thing is I also don't want to have gum stuck under the tables or dropped on the floor or anything else like that too. But mainly for us, food safety is the most important thing. Kitchen safety is paramount. So a kitchen is a dangerous place, as I mentioned. It should be treated with respect, both for your safety and the safety of everybody around you. So there can be no horseplay. We can't just mess around in the kitchen. There is no running in the kitchen. We always make sure we're communicating with others. Tell your classmates, especially if you're walking around with a hot object or around with the sharp objects, because that, that's what we have a lot of in our kitchen. So you'll actually be expected to call out behind hot, behind sharp, warn everybody else as you're coming through. Our kitchen can get very tight when we have very full classes. Make sure you do not use any piece of equipment in that kitchen unless if you have been trained on it and if I have given you permission to use it on that particular day. We don't just take out blenders and start switching them on and playing around with them. Nothing that we have in our kitchen is a toy. So let's talk now about our kitchen uniform. So we will be issuing you with a uniform, depending on which level you are in, and will depend upon what you're going to be using. So each person is going to have a set of closed toed, slip resistant, flat soled, non-absorbent shoes. These are uh, kitchen clogs that you'll be issued. We'll get your sizes so we can get the appropriate ones for you. You'll also get a set of chef black chef pants as well. Uh, a chef hat will also be pr provided to you. However, this standard chef hat may not encapsulate your hair completely. So let's discuss what we need to do. There are lots of options out there that you can use uh, that my students have perfected over the years. And we'll discuss that depending on what, what your needs are with your hair. Large hair extensions, as I mentioned, are discouraged as they can cause hygiene issues in the kitchen and they can, uh, they can be very difficult to actually completely encapsulate. So just bear that in mind um, if you're planning on having something special done with your hair as to whether it will work for your time in the kitchen. Class chef jackets will be supplied uh, to use during certain lab times. And then we'll also have aprons, which will be ready for you each day as well. If you are in level two, you will also be issued with your personal chef coats. Your personal chef coat will have your name embroidered on it, the Career Center logo embroidered on it, and the Pro Start and the American Culinary Federation logos embroidered on there as well. You'll be issued that towards the beginning of your level two class time 
and you'll wear that throughout that final year with me as well. As I mentioned on here, kitchen entry is at the chef's discretion. Students um, in incomplete uniforms may be restricted from the kitchen or restricted to just using the dishwash pot wash area instead. Please make sure when you are issued with all of these uniform pieces that you are prepared and ready every single day. Come and discuss with me if you have any special requirements or um, any special challenges but it's expected that you turn up to school every day and have these ready. I do have a place for you to be able to store these each day so that you can keep them at school. You don't have to take them in your already very overfilled bags anyway. We'll make sure that you're set up for success with this. But also, when you finish intro, when you finish level one, and when you're going into level two, you will be expected to hold on to these closed-toed shoes, the black chef pants, um, and then eventually your chef coat as well, you'll be expected to keep those safe and your chef hat so that when you come back in for the next level, you'll still have them. You will only be issued you with these from the school one time. After that, you will have to pay for any replacements yourself after that one time that we issue these. As it goes generally with most classes, when we're actually going through demo times and teaching times, I do expect to not have students talking over me or talking um, under me just to try and uh, have a conversation at the same time. It's rude towards me, but it's also rude towards your fellow cohort. We want to make sure we get the most out of the precious time we have in both the classroom and the kitchen so you can maximize the growth that you can have in that time. This also applies to tests and quizzes. These are um, very often done in accordance with certain uh, authorities, and we have to make sure that everything is done appropriately. If not, you could be expelled from being able to use or do one of these exams that could benefit you in the future. Making sure that when we're in the kitchen that we're not communicating too loudly. It's quite loud in there already with the fans and the equipment rolling, but we can talk and be able to be heard, but without screaming and shouting over each other. When we're in the classroom, some students may be tempted to put their head down and start falling asleep, not paying attention. This goes into your employability grade as well. I expect everybody to be participating in all parts of our time. Profanity will not be acceptable at any time. Gordon Ramsay is not in my kitchen. I expect everyone to be respectful of each other. Headphones and earbuds in general won't be necessary but there will be times when you may be able to use them to listen to videos and do certain research pieces, but most of the time that's not going to be necessary. Making sure that if you are not helping with the cleaning at the end of the classes, that will also affect your employability grade too. If you're always the person uh, 15 minutes before the end of class that's asking if they can go to the restroom, that does get noticed that maybe you're dodging doing the cleanup. It should be something that the whole team works on together. If you're not participating, if you're the person who's standing back and watching everybody else taking care of things, there's not enough room in our kitchen just to have a bunch of supervisors. You personally will miss out on great opportunities if that's the case. Be part of your team and be part of all of the work that's going on. Make sure, as I mentioned before, that you're always in uniform when we go into the kitchen so that, that way you're safe and our food is safe too. Always have a sense of purpose or a reasonable pace that you're, that you're running with. Some students, if I give them two pounds of carrots and ask them to cut them up, they'll look and see there's 45 minutes of class left and they'll just burn all of that time just doing those few carrots. It's important if you do things as efficiently as you possibly can, then after that, we'll have more things we'll be able to get done and more things you'll be able to achieve. It's up to you. What you put in is what you'll get out from this class. There'll be bell ringers and exit tickets when you're coming into my class. There'll be things that I'll be asking you for when you first walk in. I may be trying to learn more about you, the things you like, the things you're challenged with, the things that we can look at for you to grow with. And then exit tickets are very often issued when I'm looking to see if you took in all the things we were looking for during that day. With ProStar and the American Culinary Federation, I'm going to go into more details about them, but we follow both of their curriculums along with ServeSafe as well. 
And we're actually going to go into a lot of different opportunities here that you can uh, jump into as well. This includes things like competitions as well as nationally recognized certifications. We'll talk more about this in class and I'll make sure that I pre-warn you before these things come up so you can take advantage of all of these opportunities. We're now on to the last page of our syllabus. And so this is really important that you pay attention to this and that you make sure that all the parents get this part done as well, please. So it's important, you are signing this to say that you agree to all of the things that are in this syllabus. If there are any issues with this, I need for you to discuss this with me. Communication here is key. But if you're signing this, that, in, that tells me that you are agreeing to everything that's on here, and I will hold you responsible to this, and you can hold me responsible to everything that's expected within here as well. So the students are expected to print and sign their name, and at least one parent should sign, or guardian, should sign and print their name, and please give me a correct phone number and, uh, and email as well. I don't generally reach out with issues. I will if there are multiple issues going on, but what I actually enjoy doing more often than not is to reach out and tell their parents all about the good things that are happening. Please expect an email from me every week that talks about the great things we did the week before and the things we've got coming up this week and the things that we'll be doing in the classroom and the kitchen as well. I love to be able to keep everybody up to date so you know exactly what's coming up but also so you can share in some of the fun that we're doing. Towards the bottom of this page has a part on here where we can talk about either allergies or if there are any religious issues, please write down anything on here that a student cannot taste or eat in their time in here. This is important because I don't want anybody to be injured by anything that we consume or taste while we're in the classroom or in the kitchen. I also, last of all, ask about the internet connection at home. This isn't because I'm particularly interested in how great your internet speed might be versus mine. This is all to do with, I need to know if when we have some of those occasional days, maybe if it's a snow day, or maybe if it, that you're off sick, or maybe you've been injured or something like that, do you have capability to be able to get onto the internet while you're at home and be able to do some work from home? I just like to be able to keep informed on things like this. And then as you can see, right at the bottom of our syllabus here, we have the two QR codes, one for the website and one for the YouTube channel. Now let me tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Dominic Hawkes, and I'm originally, as you may hear from my accent, not from the United States. I'm from England, from a town in the northern suburbs of London. During my time in school, in high school, I had the opportunity to go and do a work placement for a couple of weeks anywhere in any industry. I chose to go into the hospitality industry and into the kitchen. I loved straight away being able to be part of a team and what that really meant, where you could do something much, much bigger than just yourself. And so I had an opportunity to go to the Prince Regent Hotel. It's a four-star hotel in North London. After I finished those two weeks, I asked if I could stay, and they said, well, we're not hiring right now, but I said, well, I'll stay for free because I just want to get experience before I go to college, and they said, well, for free, we'll hire you, so I stayed there actually for about two years while I started culinary school, and they did start paying me after a couple of months because I became a valuable um, member of their employment in there. This is their Regency Suites, and this is the uh, the very old buildings that they were that was housed in. It was renovated from a an, a medieval chapel as well as a big manor house as well. I then had the opportunity to go into London and work at the Ritz. Uh, this is one of the original Ritz built by Cesar Ritz, um, who uh, was a gentleman who built incredible hotels in both London and Paris. And so this is their main dining room. And then this is uh, the Palm Court. The Palm Court is where you have afternoon tea. And this is the outside of the Ritz, right in the center of the West End of London. I then had the opportunity to become a pastry chef working at a, a, an upmarket delicatessen. I thoroughly enjoyed this because this is where they hired me because I had great experiences from my previous employment. And so this is where the tide started to turn, where I started experiencing that I could get my next great job because someone was looking for me 
This is what we're looking for for all of our students, is to change it over from where you're looking for a job to where someone's looking for you. During that time, I started to get a little bored of just doing pastries, and so I went back into the regular kitchen again, and I had an opportunity back in London again to work at the Radisson Edwardian, um, at the Radisson Berkshire Hotel. And so I worked here for another year uh, while I was finishing up my third year of my culinary degree. And this is their main dining room. They did lots of uh, lots of theater dinners where you would have your first course and your entree, go to the theater, go to a movie or go to the symphony. And then you'd come back for your dessert and then retire to your room for the night. I then went on to do a business studies degree in hospitality management. And during that time, I had the opportunity to go and work anywhere in the world for one year. And I chose to work at Bank of America in their corporate food services. This is in Uptown Charlotte. And I worked at the very top of that tall building, the rocket ship looking building, um, where their corporate head offices are for the, uh, for the United States. Um, on, I worked on the 59th and 60th floor. Uh, these are some images. They're not very good photographs um, from uh, back in the day, back in 98 and 99 while I was there. But this looked through their incredible facility that they had at, and the incredible view that I had looking around Uptown Charlotte, which to this day now has changed a lot. There are an awful lot more things that have been built during that time. Then I had the opportunity after I went back to Britain and finished off my last semester, last two semesters of my business studies degree to then come back to the United States. I'd fallen in love with Charlotte and the Charlotte area. It's an incredible place of growth and opportunity. And so I came back to work at Charlotte City Club. Um, I was first hired there um, back in the year 2000 and I worked there until 2019. I worked there for 19 years to the day and I was their food and beverage director when I retired from there. We did lots of weddings and lots of professional events uh, while we were there. We, we, we were operated under a system where we had mutual ownership of the club, meaning that every member was an owner of the club. This is the annual membership meeting that they would have each year to discuss the successes in the club and the plans for the future. Every year I would have a new boss, a new president of the club, and the board of governors who would govern over that club as well. We got to experience some incredible things. This was Christmas um, at the club as well. I got to see the most opulent things you'd ever see, but also this was the view from my office as well. A little bit different from the view from my office these days, uh, but I love what I do these days as well. Now let's talk about your route to certifications. So you may not have heard or you may not have quite understood all of the things we talk about when we talk about certifications in the career and technical education field. This is basically anything that you do in the career center or in your school's CTE courses. They all have nationally recognized certifications so that when you go to get a job, even if you have very little experience, it proves to a future employer that you have a certain level of skill or knowledge involved in that area. So what you can do when you're in the intro level one and level two semesters with me is that you can just get your, your completer of intro level one and level two. And that's okay if all you're looking to do is just to complete, just to pass and nothing else. The only thing is this can be quite limiting as to what opportunities you can get when you finish in school and you either go on to college or if you go out into the big wide world to get a job. So what do we have as opportunities and with certifications in our culinary arts? So first of all, when you are in level one, then you'll actually look at the ProStart one certification exam. In level two, at the end, in the second semester, you'll do the ProStart two certification exam. So what does this mean? This is specifically on the culinary and hospitality studies. So we're going to go into everything from the basics of making stocks, soups, sauces, making salads, making breads, doing pastry arts. We'll also look at the management side of things, managing a restaurant, 
running the service of a fine dining restaurant, looking at accounting, culinary math, all of these things that will help you to be a better manager, whether it's in the chef side, in the kitchen, in the heart of house, or if it's in the front of house, being a, a front of house manager running the restaurant. But you'll take the Pro Start 1 exam in, uh, in level 1. However, you will start to actually work on the course in intro as well. We'll talk more about that when you're in there. At the end of this, if you achieve both the Pro Start 1 and Pro Start 2 certification exams, then you can also start working towards your COA, your Certificate of Achievement. This is all awarded by the National Restaurant Association Education Foundation. There are specific stipulated items that have to be achieved with this, but it also involves you getting a job in the big wide world. Generally, it's done by students in their junior and senior year in school, where you might be able to get a part-time job uh, somewhere around in the area. We'll talk more about that, and I've got some recommendations and advice on how you can do these things as well. Serve safe, as we mentioned before, being safe in our kitchen with the food and personal safety is paramount. And so Serve Safe, part of National Restaurant Association as well, has a has two different courses that we follow. In Intro to Culinary Arts, this will be your first certification opportunity to take the Food Handlers Certification. It's an online course and exam. It's graded and created by them. And so it's up to you to be able to study this and make sure that you can pass this. We will start on day one of the first, uh, of the first um, semester. And this is because I never test anybody or I never set anybody up just to take a test. I always do everything I can to create good habits, which will form knowledge, which will then put you in a position to pass these exams without too much stress. Fast forward now to Culinary Arts 2 in the first semester. You'll be studying for the Serve Safe Food Safety Manager Certification. This is a course and exam which is a college level course and exam. It's hard. It's very hard. But again, we'll be studying this from day one, forming good habits, understanding the law, and making sure that we follow it to the, uh, to the nth degree to make sure that you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Nationally, students generally at high school level, more than 50% of them will fail this exam. However, I can tell you that in general, in, uh, in our career center, in culinary arts, we generally get about 90% of our students pass this, but that's because of the methods we follow and the hard work that my students put in every day. This is the expectation for you. Our capstone certification that we have is with the American Culinary Federation. This is where we are accredited um, to be able to give you the CFC certification and designation if you meet all the requirements which are placed. So this is something that once you've completed intro, level one and level two, and if you uh, attain at least a 70 or above at each of those levels, and you also pass all of the knowledge and competencies which are covered, which include minimum standards specifically for food safety, nutrition, and management, then you can, um, if you get everything completed, be able to qualify for the CFC certification. This is a big deal, and it literally puts those letters after your name as well. You can walk out from school with those letters after your name, putting it onto business cards, onto, uh, onto any stationery, things like that, onto your email address, and it's a big deal. This can get you into colleges with ease, and it can also get you a better paying job at the end of the day because you show this exceptional level of, of qualification and understanding in the culinary field. We can talk more about this as we go through as well, but this is something again that we start day one. Something that I pride myself in is to always be pushing for a stronger program. And ever since I came into the education field from all of my experience out in the big wide world, I push and push and push to make sure that our program becomes stronger 
but also so it offers more opportunities to every one of our students. So let's talk about some of our most recent things that have strengthened our, our project our program that we have. So as you can see here, we've got a few nice plates of different foods that we've produced here. These are actually part of a new course which I have created, which is being published right now. And this is available uh, to students now across the country. And this is part of our food safety. What I have emulated in this program is actually something that other courses have struggled with. And so I've taken everything that we do in Lancaster and I've placed it into, um, into this book and program that's now going across the country. Every one of our students will get the benefit from this because this is what we teach every single day. We also um, have great businesses around us which support us, that look to help us to teach students how to do things and to give opportunities for employment as well. We have work-based learning, which is available to students, and we have lots of placements that we have students in all around the general region. Depending upon your transportation capabilities will depend on what kinds of things we can suggest, but we're very happy if we have a good, hard-working student to be able to help them to find a great place to get part-time work while they're in school, and then maybe find them something even bigger when they're finished. We have lots of connections with all of our courses, uh, all the co college courses around in the area as well. We're not far away from Johnson & Wales University, but there's also uh, the Truist Center, which is over at um, the Greenville Tech. They have an incredible, exceptional ACF accredited class there. If you look over to the International Culinary Institute out at Myrtle Beach, they also have a fantastic ACF accredited course there. And down at Charleston, Trident Tech also has an exceptional course, which is ACF accredited too. Because we are ACF accredited, that also means that you can go straight into their programs and go straight into all of the certifications above and beyond what other students would have already been doing as well. I've also been very, uh, very much benefited by quite a few awards recently. Uh, very generous of both uh, the South Carolina uh, Career and Technical Education Association to award me um, with a teacher a teaching certificate, but then also um, the South Carolina CATE um, Culinary Award was given to me as well. Um, and then even bigger on a national scale, this was ProStart, National Restaurant Association, were very kind to award me with an Educator of Excellence Award uh, for uh, best practice knowledge sharing and uh, I got a few benefits from that as well they were very kind to recognize me with these things but a lot of these things actually came about from the pandemic times when I actually started recording classes and trying to create bigger benefits for our students speaking of other benefits I've also had the opportunity to go on Charlotte Cooks on PBS Charlotte um, I won the Carolina Classic Cook-Off um, that they had going on there, and we filmed that. As part of that, I invited them to come to the Career Center. And so our students um, actually managed to uh, be filmed and had a, a short piece of video created about them. But then PBS saw such an impact that our students are getting in not just culinary arts, but everywhere else in the Career Center, that they came back to film an entire show all about the Career Center. Our students will have the opportunity to be able to watch that as well. But I was very proud of everything that our students did that day uh, when they came into film because they really showed their first class. I'm also a Master Chef of Great Britain. Uh, I've been honored by them uh, as a member as well. We also work with other departments within the Career Center as well in any way that we possibly can. Sometimes we'll be cooking for other departments. Other times, we'll be using some of the benefits that they create as well. We have a wonderful agriculture department at the Career Center, as well as at other um, high schools as well. And so there are great opportunities there where we combine what they do with what we do. As I mentioned as well, we are 
ACF, American Culinary Federation accredited. If you weren't already aware, we are currently the only ACF accredited high school level course in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Virginia. How do I know this? Well, because I'm actually currently teaching other teachers in those three states how to get that achieved so that they can also become accredited and give their students more benefits. But as it stands right now, we're the only school district that are doing this. So this is where I can tell my students that when you go on to one of the other ACF accredited schools for post-secondary, where I was talking about Trident Tech, Greenville Tech, or um, the International Culinary Institute at Myrtle Beach, if you go to any of those, you'll be at the top of the class on day one because you'll be the only one who has an ACF certification when you're going into there. I'm also part of the ProStart national team as well, where we're always looking to in increase the quality of everything that we're doing across all of our curriculum as well. I try to stay on top of these things and always try and stay ahead of the game so that, that way our students are always getting the best benefits. So what does this all mean? At the end of the day, if you're willing to work hard, if you're willing to show up on time, and if you're willing to bring your A game all of the time, and if you have the passion that you want to do better in your life and that you have interest in the hospitality field, whether it's looking at being in the front of house, in the back of house, if you're looking to be an accountant, if you're looking to be an architect, whatever it might be that's specifically to do with the hospitality world, we can get you started, give you better opportunities than you may find anywhere else. But now it's up to you. Make sure if you're going to be in this class, make sure you're ready to work. And I look forward to doing lots of great things this semester.